But what makes me happy is knowing the Broncos quarterback now is Russell Wilson. On Twitter, I have a daily affirmation every single day. Russell Wilson is the Broncos quarterback. The afterglow has not worn off. It's it's insane. George Payton for president, the Broncos GM. Because I, I truly do believe that Russell Wilson was stolen from Seattle. He didn't give up three first round picks. He didn't give up a foundational player on defense. You know who's out there? Is Bobby Wagner. And I'm not saying, I'm just saying the <laughs> Russell Wilson can like it. Bobby Wagner. I like the it. The more he toils away on the open market, I think the cheaper he can be. I would love for the Broncos to bring him in, but that's another position I think they're going to address for the draft. DJ Jones is the signing I'm super hyped about because he's not only going to help replace Shelby, who is more of a pass rusher than a run stuffer, but he's going to be a giant upgrade on Purcell there. He led the NFL in stuffs, according to Pro Football Focus last season. I wouldn't look for Melvin Gordon to come back. He wants to come back to Denver, but all he would do is take carries away from Javante, and that is the guy they need to build around. They traded up in the second round for a devalued position in running back. Why not let him run wild? Yeah, I think this is a position they might even look to address at 64 in the draft. Their first, maybe Trey McBride, a home home state kind of guy. Um, Albert O has all the talent, but he's had some drops, some injury concerns. I don't think he's quite ready to take that leap. <laughs> Glaring issue at right tackle. They can't go into the season protecting Russell freaking Wilson with Calvin Anderson or Tom Compton, no. who they just signed. They need, you know, Lyle Collins is out there. Dennis Kelly's out there. There's some decent options, but that's another position they have to restock in the draft. <laughs> It is time to talk Denver Broncos football on the Our Lads Football Network. And the Denver Broncos are coming off uh, a huge franchise-defining trade not too long ago. Russell Wilson is now a Denver Bronco. And uh, for the first time, uh, we're going to welcome Zach Kelberman uh, to our show. Zach uh, has been covering the Broncos for several years, uh, including with SI at Fan Nation. It's milehighhuddle.com. And Zach, good to have you on. It's uh, it's a fun time to be a Bronco fan. I appreciate being on with you, Greg. It's uh, definitely an exciting time. For Broncos fans and Broncos media, we've walked the desert since 2016 when Peyton Manning hung up his cleats. <laughs> yeah. We've been through the Paxton Lynches and the Brock Osweilers and the Case Keenans and the Joe Flaccos, the Drew Locks, the Teddy Bridgewaters. Just saying that makes my heart hurt. But what makes me happy is knowing the Broncos quarterback now is Russell Wilson. On Twitter, I have a daily affirmation every single day. Russell Wilson is the Broncos quarterback. The afterglow has not worn off. It's, it's insane. Yeah, and uh, uh, he's, what, 34? Well, he'll be 34 during the season. And uh, you just figure that, yeah, he's, even though every quarterback's game is going to diminish a little bit, uh, when you see Tom Brady going out there in his 40s, it's like, well, why can't Russell Wilson do that? He can. He he wants to. He wants to play 10 or 12 more years. And you know what, Greg, before that throwing hand injury, the mallet finger last year, he was an Iron Man. He had a start of like a consecutive start streak of like 120 or 130 in a row. I mean, the guy is uh, pretty consistent, pretty reliable. And as long as he stays that way and the Broncos yep. protect him, there's no reason why he can't play until his late 30s and maybe win a couple Super Bowls while he's there in Denver. I remember after he won his first and he talked about winning, just, he, just like he's saying now, he talked about winning four and five Super Bowls. And it just shows you how reality can uh, punch you in the face. It shows, it's just how tough it is to win Super Bowls in the NFL. Not everybody can be Tom Brady, but uh, Russell Wilson still has the talent. The question is, does he have the talent around him? And uh, as far as the trade, uh, the Broncos lose a first round pick in uh, both this year's draft, next year's draft. That includes second round picks in this year's draft, the next year's draft. And the top player was Fant, the tight end. Uh, when you saw the the compensation, what did you think? Did you think I'm I'm all for it, or were you like, ooh, they gave up quite a bit? 
I thought George Payton for president, the Broncos GM, because I, I truly do believe that Russell Wilson was stolen from Seattle. He didn't give up three first round picks. He didn't give up a foundational player on defense. Shelby Harris was thrown in, but he wasn't a foundational player. Noah Fant, he never really lived up to his draft pedigree in Denver. They have a guy named Albert Okwebunam who's going to step in. And also Drew Locke, you don't need him anymore if you bring in Russell Wilson. I thought the compensation was fair. You also got a pick back in return from Seattle for Wilson. I think they're fleecing him in that regard. And by trading those three players in that deal, they actually cleared $12 million in salary cap space. They walked away from that trade, assuming Russell Wilson's contract, with more salary cap space than they had going in. I thought it was a phenomenal deal for the Broncos. Well, let's uh, now dive into what the Broncos in, are going to need to do with that money and including the draft. But uh, I tell you what, before we do that, uh, Nathaniel Hackett is now the head coach. So he's never been a head coach before. And uh, this is probably not the show to kind of break down uh, what kind of coach he could be and all that. But the, 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 the key for me is the hire of uh, Ijiro. Uh, the defensive coordinator because he's never been a defensive coordinator before. And, and I know everybody talks about nowadays, Oh, nobody runs a standard three, four, four, three anymore. That's just coach speak because they just don't want to say anything, but talent wise. And what you've heard is, is Denver going to stick to a three, four. Uh, and have you heard anything else that leads you to believe that they're going to do anything different than what they've done scheme wise over the last couple of years. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, Vic Fangio was the Broncos DC the last couple of years while also being the head coach. And, you know, they finished, I think it was fourth or fifth in uh, scoring last year, points per game allowed, but they never made those game changing plays. Greg, they never had the sack fumbles, the interceptions, they never did anything to change the complexity of the game. That's what Evero is going to bring to the table. He wants to be more active. He wants to be more blitz happy. He wants to be back to the Wade Phillips level of defense in Denver, not the Vic Fangio level. So he's going to keep the three, four, in place and and honestly everyone runs so much nickel and dime now in the nfl there's yes. no really base everything's a hybrid so he's going to keep the three four and he brought in players like randy gregory for example that screams off the edge and is going to help accomplish his goal of creating turnovers creating more sacks creating more takeaways one little point the broncos finished dead last in uh forced fumbles last year with six six and 17 games Randy Gregory on his own had three. Yep. And you bring a guy like that in and also Evero who has that mentality, you're going to see the Denver defense um, leading, I think, not maybe not leading the league, but near the top of the NFL in our takeaways. So that's going to be, and that's going to be important when, when we take a look at the type of players that they're going to try to bring in on defense as well. So uh, let's start up front because you mentioned uh, Gregory at linebacker off the edge. And Chubbs, of course, off the edge, too. Uh, he just has to stay healthy. That's the right. main thing when there. When he's playing. And, uh, and then they tendered Reed. So it looks like Reed will be back? Yeah, as a rotational guy. Okay. So those are your top three edge rushers. Uh, they probably need another one, right? Yeah. How important is that? Uh, and again, no first-round draft pick. So they don't have another pick until what? The first pick is 64. 64. Uh, it's a very deep class of edge rushers. Uh, uh, do you think between free agency, there's still some good free agents out there as well. Do you think between free agency and the draft, Denver will be looking for a premium edge rusher? I mean, the the guys that are left on the open market are like guys like Jadevion Clowney, who is a, a walking risk and he's a mercenary. So I think George Payton and Nathaniel Hackett and Evero are going to wait till the draft and solidify that that uh, spot there. But you brought in Gregory. You're hopeful that Bradley Chubb is going to perform on his fifth year option, you know, make or break for him. If he stays healthy, he has a lot of talent. Sure. And they have a guy named Jonathan Cooper, who was a seventh round pick last year, who they like a lot. And he performed well in Von Miller's stead. So it's not easy replacing someone like Von Miller, no. but I think between the sum of all their parts, they're going to get that done. But they will, I promise you, fortify that spot in the draft. Okay. Uh, also on defense, at middle linebacker, they brought back Jewel. And Alexander mm. Johnson is still a free agent. Uh, does Browning just replace Johnson now? Yeah, I mean, Browning was a starter last year. So the thing is, Jewel and Johnson both had season-ending injuries. Yeah. So it was Baron Browning that had to be forced into duty before he was, I think, ready for it. But yeah, he's locked into his starting role. Okay. The thing with Jewel, I'm not the biggest Jewel guy in the world, Greg, to be honest with you. And they brought him back on a one-year, like, $2 million contract. That's not starting money to True. me. I still think they can upgrade that spot. You know who's out there is Bobby Wagner. 
And I'm not saying, I'm just saying the <laughs> Russell Wilson connection, I like it. Bob Wagner, I like the it. more he toils away on the open market, I think the cheaper he can be. I would love for the Broncos to bring him in, but that's another position I think they're going to address for the draft. All right. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, that sounds like, because cap wise, where are the Broncos right now? About nine. Okay. That's not bad. Cap's a myth. If they want Bobby Wagner, they can, they can sign him. Bobby Wagner. Okay. Sounds good. Now, uh, by the way, do you think they bring back Alexander Johnson? I don't know. You know, they have they had AJ, they had Josie, and they had Kenny Young as UFAs. Both um, ins- all, all three were inside linebackers. I think they chose Jewel among the three. I don't see AJ coming back, but maybe the longer he stays out there, the cheaper he would be on a one-year deal. He sure. was performing at a pretty high level before he got hurt last year, but I haven't heard anything that uh, his return is imminent. Okay, well, we'll keep an eye on that. And Kenny Young, they traded for him, so uh, you yeah. think they just weren't really... I know it's a different defense, but you don't think that uh, they'll bring him back? Well, it's surprising because it's not because he came from L.A. where Evero was. And I know oh, Evero was the secondary coach, but um, yeah. it's surprising because Kenny Young gave the Broncos what they haven't had since Danny Trevathan, which is like an athletic three-down inside linebacker. They've had run stoppers the last couple of years, like Josie Jewell or A.J. But right. Kenny, um, he ended the season pretty well. I haven't heard a word, a peep about him coming back. Kind of surprising. Okay. Uh, let's now talk about uh, the secondary there. Uh, actually, before we get to the secondary, let's go up front because we were just talking about uh, this three-man front now, and they signed DJ Jones. So he basically, is he like a trade-off with Shelby Harris? And if that's the case, um, they've got good players, uh, Purcell, Jones, and so forth. Steven's still a free agent. Uh, Do you think they might look for a difference maker? Or maybe this is not the year for that without a first-round pick, and and do they either re-sign Steven or go, uh, go the means of, again, a free agent or the draft? The thing is, you can't have a pro bowler in every position. No. So uh, they're they're going to have you know a, a downturn somewhere on that defense. But Draymond Jones, Greg, not a lot of people know about him. He hasn't broken out yet, but I think this is the year that he will. He has pro bowl upside to me. Mike Purcell, just as recently as 2019, when he scored his contract extension, he was the highest rated run plugging nose tackle in the NFL. Kind of fallen off a little bit, but DJ Jones is the signing I'm super hyped about because he's not only going to help replace Shelby, who is more of a pass rusher than a run stuffer, but he's going to be a giant upgrade on Purcell there. He led the NFL in stuffs, according to Pro Football Focus last season, and they got gashed up the middle. So between, again, you have all those players chipping in Draymond, you have Purcell on early downs, you have DJ Jones, they have some other guys they're high on. I think you're going to see a defense that's not going to be ran on too easily. Okay. Uh, Secondary. Now, this is where it gets interesting at corner uh, because it looks like uh, with uh, now uh, OJ Moutier uh, sure looked like he played well when he was healthy. And uh, obviously they invested in him quite a bit a couple years ago and certain uh, and then you have Darby. So it looks like they're okay with, uh, with three of their top corners Uh, Fuller and Callahan are still free agents. So how do they, how do they fix the rest of their cornerback situation? What's your guess? Do they bring back either Fuller or Callahan, or is this a position that they have to upgrade at the draft at some point? I mean, they're going to have to, when you have Devonte Adams coming to the West. Now you have to keep up with the arms race and, uh, Kyle Fuller can kick rocks as far as I'm concerned, but I would bring back Bryce Callahan. That guy is all pro level when he's healthy. The problem is he's never yeah. freaking healthy. Yeah. He's always had a foot problem. So I would bring him back on a short term incentive laden deal, maybe one year, but they got to get another cornerback. And actually I've heard that's the next priority between now and the draft is finding some cornerback help. Stefan Gilmore is out there. Dante Jackson's out there. Steven Nelson's out there. But Bryce, that could be a guy they look to bring back for sure. Okay. And then safety, they seem to be uh, in a little bit better situation as long as they're confident in Stearns and Johnson. Yeah. Uh, Is is that the case? And do they bring back Jackson? Jackson wants to come back, Greg, but I'm not, again, the biggest fan of his because he's relegated to a run stuffer, the emotional leader aspect role now. He's on the wrong side of 30. He's a converted cornerback. 
I just don't think he has the upside that the Broncos need on defense. I'm a big Caden Stearns fan, and I think the new coaching staff wants to give him a shot okay. in a starting role. They have Jamar Johnson as well. That's one area they could look to fortify in the draft, but some Broncos fans want like Tyron Matthew to come to Denver. <laughs> that's not going to happen. They are really high on Caden Stearns, and I think that's a guy that could be a household name in a couple years. Let's switch over to offense and uh, over at running back. Melvin Gordon is still a free agent. Uh, it looks like, of course, Javonta Williams is going to take over uh, and, and be the, the workhorse yes. there. But uh, do they envision Williams as that, as a guy that will be like an 80% guy and then Boone can be the number two? Or do they want to relegate Williams uh, to a certain amount of touches to keep him fresh and therefore they need to replace Gordon with someone else? God, I hope not, Greg, because, you know, the best running back uh, Russell Wilson ever had in Seattle was a guy named Marshawn Lynch. And Javante Williams has drawn really, really close comparisons to like a baby Marshawn Lynch. He Same running style, same tenacity. I'm a huge Javante truther. I want him to be the not 1A, 1B. I want him to be the one. So I, I wouldn't look for Melvin Gordon to come back. He wants to come back to Denver, but all he would do is take carries away from Javante, yeah. and that is the guy they need to build around. They traded up in the second round for a devalued position in running back. Why not let him run wild? You literally cannot tackle him on first contact, not even second or third contact. He's a beast, and I think Russell's going to love handing off to him, and uh, they signed a blocking tight end, two big road-grading offensive linemen, all the breadcrumbs are aligning for Javante to be the guy in Denver this year. And that's what I would look forward to. Okay. Uh, a tight end. We mentioned, of course, fans gone. Um, Alberto. I like to just keep that simple. For me. Uh, <laughs> he steps into the number one role, but does that mean that they're done? Do they still need to bring someone else in to add depth? Or do you think that they're, are, are they in a situation they feel real confident that Alberto is their clear number one and they don't really need to worry too much about that spot? You know, I, I like Alberto, but I don't know that he's ready for that full time, you know, 100 percent of snaps on, on a game day basis. They don't have anyone behind him, though. You know, they lost um, they lost their blocking tight end. They signed Eric Tomlinson from Baltimore. But you're saying right now in your head, who exactly? He's just a, he's a blocking guy. He's a rotational guy. They need that one two punch with Alberto. So, yeah, I think this is a position they might even look to address at 64 in the draft. Their first maybe Trey McBride, a home home state kind of guy. Go. Um, Alberto has all the talent, but he's had some drops, some injury concerns. I don't think he's quite ready to take that leap, but, um, there's a guy named Gerald Everett out there, former Seahawks tight end who Russell Wilson knows. I think that could be a nice pairing, a one, two combination with Alberto. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. I like that one at wide receiver. This is the one position on the team that seems to be in, be in the best shape. Yeah. Not that many teams can go four deep when, when all four of those guys are healthy. It's crazy what they have. I mean, you talk about Jerry Judy, who's never even been given a chance. You know, Greg, under Pat Shermer last year, the Broncos' former OC, he was literally running fake jet sweeps the entire game. He wasn't even being utilized, running downfield, getting the ball in his hands. It's crazy to me. So you're going to have him kind of blossom. Obviously, Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, they're bona fide possession guys. They are beasts in the red zone. Russell's going to love throwing to them as like a DK Metcalf clone. And then you have uh, K.J. Hamler, who's coming off a knee injury, yep. but he gets back to full speed. That's your Tyler Lockett. You know, that's your Doug Baldwin going down the field. This is a super deep receiving core, and I think arguably the best receiving core Russ has ever had. Uh, you know, Zach, I'm going to ask you this question again before the season begins when we uh, talk about the team going into the 2022, 2022 season, especially fantasy-wise. But I'm going to ask you now anyway, and I'll ask you this again. Who would you lean towards? Guess who's going to end up being the number one producer at wide receiver? I, I just got this question on my podcast, uh, Greg. I think, you know, the easy answer is Cortland Sutton because he was like a top 10 fringe guy before he got hurt a couple of years ago. But once they get Jerry Judy going, yeah. I mean, there's a reason why he was the 15th overall pick. Highly touted guy coming out of Alabama insane route running, insane separation ability. I think by the end of the year, he's going to be the bona fide wide receiver, wide receiver one. And Russ is going to love getting the ball in his hands. I hope so. He's on my, uh, he's on my, my fantasy team, my dynasty team. So Good call. yeah, I'm, I'm there for the long haul. Okay. Offensive line. Uh, let's say Glasgow. He had his deal uh, reworked. They seem to be really set uh, on the interior at center and guard. They've used up draft mm -hmm. capital. there pretty well. It looks like. Do they need an upgrade 
Uh, or do you think one more season to give some of these young guys a chance? And then a tackle, right tackle, seems to be the biggest yeah. issue. Yeah. Glaring issue at right tackle. They can't go into the season protecting Russell freaking Wilson with Calvin Anderson or Tom Compton, no. who they just signed. They need, you know, Lyle Collins is out there. Dennis Kelly's out there. There's some decent options, but that's another position they have to restock in the draft. In terms of the interior, um, they're set at right guard, as far as I'm concerned, with Quinn Miners. He was... A, Good showing as a rookie last year. Center's upgradable with Lloyd Cushenberry. I think maybe Glasgow slides in there because they brought him back. And left guard with Dalton Reisner. He had a great rookie season in 2019. It's kind of fallen off the last couple of years under Mike Munchak. The hope is the new OL coach and the new system, the West Coast system under Hackett, will be more in tune with uh, Reisner's abilities. Uh, and left tackle, you have Garrett Bowles, who's one of the highest paid left tackles. They're fine there. Right tackle, they're going to upgrade for sure. And in the interior, you might see a competition at left guard and center. They bought, brought in Ben Braden, tough sentence to say out loud, uh, from uh, from Green Bay guard. They brought in Tom Compton, who can play guard as well. They have Natani Muti in the interior as well. It's going to be an open competition for those two guard spots, or maybe one guard spot, and may the best man win. Okay, interesting. Bottom line, though, is they, they seem to have the camp – bodies at least in the interior yeah. and let them play it out but the main right. issue on the offensive line is definitely right tackle so yeah. if they do not sign or if all the top guys are gone at right tackle prior to the draft which i doubt because without a first round pick it just seems to be and when you have a veteran quarterback it just seems too obvious that one of those tackles and you mentioned a couple of them Let's see. You've got uh, and and who knows? You know, Armstead could probably play there too. You got Brown. You got Brown between Brown too. Another Seattle guy. Uh, you got Bulaga. Right. You got Rife. You got Collins. You got Fisher. So there's enough veteran guys out there that they could find somebody. Hey, I get to I protect mean, Russell Wilson. I'll do that. Right, but like you know, some of those guys they're free agents for a reason. You know, Eric Fisher had an Achilles tear. Yeah. Some of these other guys are either old or washed or not performing up to their to their previous uh, play. And that's why I love Lyle Collins, Greg, because he's like still in his prime. He's a monster. He's a mountain of a man. And I think he has like the mauling ability you're going to look for in the Hackett offense that Russell Wilson would thrive with. But again, you can't have pro bowlers at every spot. So if they have a solid four out of five and that right tackle is kind of weak, you have Russell. He's a future Hall of Famer for a reason. You know, be a big boy and deal with it. You know, and, and Russell's used to it. Russell's had some of those uh, right, exactly. really bad offensive lines in Seattle. Yeah. So w whatever Denver's going to line up with uh, this upcoming season, I'm sure, is going to be an improvement. Uh, Zach, uh, you, again, you've got the uh, website at milehighhuddle.com. Uh, how often do you post yourself? Uh, what else do you do your, uh, regarding uh, content for the Denver Broncos? Everything. I'm posting multiple stories a day. I'm podcasting four days a week. We're doing video throughout the week. Uh, it's constantly being updated for all the Broncos news, rumors, analysis, transactions. We cover the biggest story, the smallest story, and I'm personally at the forefront being the deputy editor. Awesome. And then as far as uh, where to find all this out, do they just follow you on your Twitter handle? Is that the best way to do it? That would be very, very kind of y'all. At Kelberman NFL, you can follow me there or at Mile High Huddle or MileHuddle.com. Uh, go check it out if you can. I appreciate it. Zach, uh, great job. Thank you very much for uh, helping me uh, get educated on the Broncos prior to uh, the end of free agency and the draft. And uh, hopefully we'll get an opportunity to talk to you after the draft. Absolutely. Appreciate you having me on. I would love to be back. Thank uh, you. Hey, thank you, Zach.